Technology has been owned by Amazon for a long time, and I always felt it was going to be inevitable that they were going to fold them in instead of operating them as their own business. And that's starting to happen now. The world of digital comics is going to converge under the Kindle brand. So let's take a look at the start of this merger. What does it mean to have your Comixology comics in the Amazon ecosystem and using a Kindle app to read them? Let's take a look. So as stated by Comixology in the press releases that have come out lately, basically a few things are going to happen pretty soon. One, the Comixology webpage is going to go away. The Comixology mobile apps are going to be replaced with some new reading experiences. And full Comixology Kindle integration is happening. So you can read all of your purchases and merge all of your content and reading experience between Comixology and Kindle proper, meaning Kindle devices, Kindle apps, and so on. The first thing that you need to do in order to enable this integration is share the books basically between your Comixology and your Amazon accounts. Now, if you've been a user of both companies for a long time, you've probably already merged the accounts. My accounts have been merged for, for a very long time. Once that's done though, you still have to click a couple of extra boxes to start opting in the merging of these content sources. So if you go to amazon.com and you go to your accounts page and scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a new entry here for Comixology settings. If I go in here, there's a couple different things you can do. There's a library management, viewing Comixology specific books, but most importantly, in order to create the integration between your Comixology library and your Kindle library is to check this box or enable this box to essentially show your Comixology books. My visibility status right here, of course, is books are now showing already. I've already turned that on. If you follow a couple of these other links, manage your library goes to the same basically book list, digital content list that you use for Kindle books. And if I scroll past my books until I get to the first comic books that are here towards the bottom, you can see the options are basically the same. You can push these uh, comic books, collected editions, whatever to your devices, manage red status, delete, and a couple of other options here. Read now, clear for this page, build collections, and that type of thing. If I go back, viewing Comixology books is almost kind of the same thing only this is really just a list of your content. It's ordered, you can sort it, um, see a number of books per page and so on, as well as search. And if I click on any specific item in this list, it actually goes to the purchase page. Shows you, of course, when you bought it. And this is the merge dates of your purchasing from when you bought these items from Comixology directly. But what matters most is where are you gonna read your digital comics? I've always found the Comixology platform to be really quite good. The, the mobile apps have been good. They've evolved over the years. The, the quality of the images, the scans of the books and all that sort of thing has been great. The library management is excellent. excellent. I love being able to see the series view and how they find content, the way they let you control your library, archive and unarchive and other things like that. But bringing the experience Bringing all of your books into the Kindle library is different, um, different to me in, in some ways. So what I'm showing here is this is the Kindle app from the iPad. It's actually running right now on my brand new MacBook Pro 16 inch, the M1 Pro version of the MacBook. Um, I don't know exactly when Amazon did it, but they finally released the Kindle app to the uh, Mac app store. And it's pretty awesome. It works as well as the iPad app does. I was ecstatic when first setting up this new MacBook to finally see the Kindle Kindle app there, Audible audiobooks, everything works in there, works in here really well. So this is essentially an exact duplicate of the iPad experience, again, just delivered on the Mac through the Mac App Store. So if we take a quick look around the UI of the current Kindle app, we can see starting on the home page, there's some kind of quick jumps here from your library based on your reading, some recommendations, of course, Amazon always wants you to buy more stuff, as well as your reading insights, which track through comic books and all of that now as well. The second tab takes you to your library. We'll come back to this in a deeper dive in a second. The middle section here, very small icon, maybe a little bit hard to see, but that's the most recent book that I was reading. And we'll look at a couple of specific things about that. The fourth option over is Discover. Again, recommendation engines based on your reading, recommended for you and that sort of thing. And then finally, the More tab, which you can get to your specific reading insights, view Audible books, Goodreads, and access settings, and, and so on. If I go back to the library, I can see the difference between all and downloaded, and I have downloaded a couple of books to demo here. I can filter. Now, one of the things that I don't particularly like, and I think this is coming, is there's no specific filter for comic books. They basically take the comic books, whether single issues or collected editions, and put them right in with all of your books. You can see here, I've got just over 9,000 books. My Comixology library was very big. 
There's a few hundred Kindle books in there, but the bulk of that is actually Comixology Comics. Over on the sort, we can see things by grid, by list, and by collections, which means that one of the nice, really, things about this is you can make your own comic book collections. Although I do wish there was some level of hierarchy to it, meaning I could make a Marvel Comics collection, and then inside that collection, I would be able to make an X-Men, a Spider-Man, or whatever that might be. So as it is, collections is only one level deep. And of course, there's different sorting options by recent title, author, and publication date. And quick jumps on the right-hand side for the going to different letters of the alphabet. Series grouping is now enabled in the Kindle apps. So you can see here, Superman, Golden Age volumes, I have six of them and they're auto grouped into this series. So that all happens for you automatically. That's very nice. And they do differentiate between series of collected editions and series of single issues. Notice that this Superman in Action Comics, the new 52 series shows volumes, whereas these actual individual issues are labeled as issues but they all pretty much present the same. Stuff that you've read has the red tag on it, and when the series is read, this is kind of cool too, it shows, it shows a full red tag on the series as well for all the books that you own actually in that series. If I go ahead and open a book, I'll just go to this, the classic Wolverine Frank Miller miniseries, second issue. First thing right off the bat, the worst possible aspect of reading your comic books on the Kindle app, they do not look very good. And this is a real prime example of this. You can see all of the noise on this cover. It's, it's basically encoding noise. These are not very well encoded. They're not very high resolution. If I pull up this same book on anything on my iPad, including Marvel Unlimited, Comixology itself, the Marvel app, it looks incredibly better. The Kindle app on the iPad, of course, looks the same as the Kindle app on the MacBook because it's the same app, because it's the same assets. So let's take a quick look at that now. All right, so let's take a look at that same issue of Wolverine on a couple of different apps running here on my iPad Pro 2018 11-inch model. We'll zoom in here kind of close. So first we're gonna look at the Kindle app. Again, I was using the same exact Kindle app on the MacBook before. And if I go ahead and I open this book, we can see the same digital noise around the edges. It's not a flat, nice blue, background. It looks lower resolution. It looks noisy. You can see all the noise there around the 2010 Marvel characters text and so on. So let's look at another app. This is the Comixology app itself, Comixology proper. And if I go ahead and I open that same issue of Wolverine, and you can see there's none here. This is solid, blue, clean, clean text higher resolution, sharper looking quality, no ringing around any of the text. Incredibly, incredibly sharper, incredibly better than that Kindle presentation. All right, so coming back to the reader in the Kindle, of course I can swipe to read through the pages. And one thing I do like about reading in landscape on a bigger screen, and it looks, if the quality of the, of the actual comic book pages was really high, then this MacBook would be an incredible treat to read on because the screen is such high quality. But it's the two page spreads. And the fact also that when you're reading landscape, Comixology is like one of the only comic book readers, and now also in the Kindle app too, that shows you the two single page spreads side by side. Marvel Unlimited, DC Universe, they don't do this. If you go landscape in those apps, they only show you one page. And it's just so much nicer reading side by side two page spreads like this throughout the book. So again, very easy to page through. If I tap on the book itself, um, I open up the same kind of timeline that you get reading through a regular Kindle book. I can, I can see places where I've been and stopped. I can move this as a slider to get to different locations as well as giving me the jump back to exactly where I was. I have an all page spread. And of course I have some other reading options. Table of contents, which I haven't seen really completed for any books. And then reading options, which gives me the guided view options as well as some transitional controls and so on. Letterboxing and, and also enabling vertical scroll, which is basically fit to width if you wanna see your books in a kind of a 
more zoomed in view. I'm not a big fan of this. The way comic book art and such is designed, I generally always read in a fit view so I can see the entirety of the page, absorb the entirety of the page in one shot. If I get through to the end of a book, I hit the pop-up screen giving me options to review it, recommend, and so on. Oddly, it shows me the next book in the series, but there's no way to read. It doesn't give me the option to just start reading this book. Try a sample, learn more. I own this book in my library, and so it would be much nicer if I could just enter that book or access that book directly. And then even dismissing that last screen doesn't take me. I actually have to close the book here, which minimizes it and puts it back down on the towards the bottom of the screen. If I go into that series, we can see now. Downloading is just cl click to download, and this all works pretty quick. And even if I go back into book two here and I page through, now that I have book three downloaded, there's still not an option to just jump to the next book in the series without clicking this away, clicking this down, and then manually entering it. So kind of lame. I really like the, the navigation of the new Marvel Unlimited, particularly when you're reading series or you're following series to be able to read a book, finish a book, and just jump right into the next one and chain, chain read one right after the other. So I will say it is nice having having this level of integration. I've long wondered if, if I would actually prefer this or if I kind of like my comic collection as its own thing, as its standalone thing. And I, I believe as long as the filtering options come, the collection management and so on comes, this could be really great. But no matter what, they absolutely have to up the quality. These should be very, very high quality books in here. And at least for right now, they're really not. It doesn't give me a lot of hope that maybe they'll be upgrading the entirety of all of the books being merged in. This might just be what you get. I'm also kind of on the fence I, at best, I would say, about the Amazon uh, web page purchasing and browsing experience for books. It's just not good. Comixology is so focused on comic books, on series, and linking through to different characters and creators and and so on but amazon is just a just just a disjointed mess of search that if i wanted to to find a specific book find a specific series look for content for a specific character understand the difference between single issues and collected editions it's just nowhere 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 near as good as the comiXology experience so there is supposed to be some form of an amazon Comicsology focused web page coming, and who knows, maybe that will merge kind of the best of both worlds and bring in the nice aspects of Comicsology along with putting the, the the Amazon wrapper on it. I also really like the way that Comicsology lets you archive books without deleting them from your collection. As you can see, looking at just a little snapshot of some of what's in my collection here. In some cases, I actually own the single issues and I own the collection edition. As stuff has been on sale over the years, I've I bought one way and read one way and then decided to flip. Uh, flip from single issues to collected editions and back again. I've spent way more money than I should have and it's kind of a mess. And so over the years I've actually flip-flopped from archiving all my single issues and, and presenting collected editions and back again. Amazon only gives you the facility to delete and when you delete they're gone. So you got to make sure that you're making the choice for what you really want to do. If I take a look at one of these issues here and I long press on it, it gives me the selection menu to do a couple of, of other book management options like that as well, such as remove from library in bright red, knowing that this is a permanent decision, along with download markers red and book details and so on. So we'll see how this goes. I I had kind of transitioned away from comicsology um, and been reading a lot more on DC Universe and particularly Marvel Unlimited as well. And I, I got excited when I saw some of this news about bringing the reading experience together because I like to read. I like to read books. I like audiobooks, all of it. So having, again, the integration of comic books and all of this stuff and audiobooks in one place, one app that I can get to on all my devices, now including this Mac laptop, is just aces. That's just really, really great. But they got to fix up some of these shortcomings and we'll see... We'll see where it goes. As it is, I believe this complete integration is coming more more into latter part of the year here. If you have any questions or there's something else that I can demonstrate, something else that you might want to see, let me know in the comments. And let me know, are you going to switch over to Amazon integration for your comic book reading? Are you sticking to the unlimited subscription services? Or are they going to have to drag you over kind of kicking and screaming? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. Thanks.